Welcome to this new how-to. In this how-to we're going to look at how we can use little nav map using a remote machine. And uh, what I mean with a remote machine is that we're going to put the database files from uh, our local installation on a remote machine so that we can use it for flight tracking purposes. So you will find the uh, database files in the following location, right? It is my username, then app data, roaming, and then a bar tool. And inside that folder, you will find the uh, little underscore navmap db, which contains all or which exists out of uh, SQLite databases, uh, which you can which you need to copy. Or the easiest way to do it is we simply copy this complete folder. And copying this can be either done um, using a USB drive or using a remote. Uh, network share uh, it depends on what you want so let's do that so I already prepared that so I already copied this uh, folder to a USB drive to I would say to not waste your time watching this uh, recording so let's hop over to the uh, remote machine so this is the remote machine uh, as you can see uh, same file structures in place so also the uh, the roaming a bar tool uh, and you can see that there's already a little nav map DB. Uh, that's because I already pasted the copy of the USB drive uh, on this machine. So again, same folder structure. Make sure you're using this, this folder structure, then then should work. So the next thing we should do is of course start up a little nav map, uh, which I already did. And then there's something which you need to keep in mind is that if you started a little nav, little nav map prior to copying the database files, you might need to uh, select a scenery library and select the correct uh, scenery library. So let me do that. Um, so I'll first need to collect. Okay, I'll zoom in again. And then again, select scenery li library and make sure that you selected Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. Right, so that's really important. So we're gonna zoom out again, and we're gonna hop back on the, uh, I would say, on the machine having Flight Simulator installed. So what you need to do is inside the uh, little nav map folder, you will find a file called little nav uh, connect. So if you start it. Uh, if you start the first time, it will give you a warning and it will, will say, okay, hey, do you trust this file? You can select, hey, I trust this file and then run it. And in addition to that, uh, you need to configure a firewall rule, which it will also automatically prompt you to do. However, if for some reason you forgot to do that, um, let me show you how you can fix that piece. So what you need to do is you need to search for a firewall in your, uh, or for, for firing your uh, start menu and then select the option uh, Windows Defender Advanced Firewall. Oh, let me close zoom. Let me type it again. You'll find it here. So you can open it. Let me zoom out the first, increase it. And what you then need to do is you need to select inbound rules. And in the inbound rules, you will find a lot of rules including the ones for little nav map connect. Make sure that there is a check mark set here. Uh, if not, for example, uh, like these files, which where the file rule is blocked, then go to the rule, click on properties, and then inside that rules, make sure that it's set to allow the connection and you need to allow both uh, UDP and TCP connections. So there are two rules created for a uh, little nav connect. So once you've validated that, you can go back to the main screen of Little Nav Connect and you will see some info. So you will see the version, uh, you will see, okay, hey, what, uh, what, what I'm waiting for, I'm waiting for X-Plane or uh, I'm waiting for Flight Simulator. In this case, we want to wait for Flight Simulator. So you can click it and it will say, okay, hey, I'm either connected or not connected. If you're not connected, don't be afraid then first make sure that you're starting flight simulator go to one of the the airports or one of the locations in the world and once you're there you will see that it will change to connected 
Another thing which, which is interesting here is the server listening on the host name. So this is the information you need to, uh, I would say, uh, provide on the remote machine, which is used for tracking purposes. So I've made a note of this one. Uh, as you can see, I already played around with it. Uh, it already says, okay, connecting, uh, not connected. So let's hop over to the remote machine and uh, let's uh, show you what you need to do on that end. So using the IP, we can go back to the remote machine and we need to select the tools option. Uh, let me zoom in and then use the connection method. And using the connection method, we can select remote network, right? But normally you would select FSX, PrepareDD or MSFS. In this case, we need to connect to the remote instance of little nav connect. And that's where, why it simply connects to this. Uh, this IP address using uh, the port being shown here. If you want it to be automatically connected, make sure that you put the checkbox here, connect automatically, and then once you're done, click connect. Uh, be aware that the machine or that the op or that the tool doesn't provide you any feedback about when it's uh, successfully connected. However, it will show you if it failed to connect. So if it failed to connect, make sure that you are uh, checking the firewall rules. Uh, another thing which you need to keep in mind is that the flight plan needs to be loaded on both ends, right? So it needs to be loaded in Flight Simulator itself, but it also needs to be loaded uh, within Little Nav Map on the machine which you're going to use for tracking purposes. So as you can see, flight plan has already been loaded. So here's been established already, all, a lot of information being displayed here. And also uh, on the right side, let me go into that it says okay hey you're using this airplane uh, there's no active flight plan lag because there's we're not yet flying right we're still on the runway and it will show you the progress so let's let's move on to flight simulator and then i will show you in a few minutes i will go back to uh, a little nav map on the re remote machine so you can can see how it works it's it's really cool so going to flight simulator uh, So let me see where we were. There was a lot of traffic. So let me see we were we were clear to take off. So then we will remove the parking brakes and we'll apply throttle. As you can see the weather is uh, really bad at Skipple. It's uh, windy like crazy. As you can see, so probably not selected the correct era runway for uh, takeoff. As you can see, the wind is very, very hard. So, takeoff. So we can acknowledge handoff. Going to one one nine or decimal zero five five Cessna X ray Gulf Sierra. Delta two five nine. I'm gonna switch to skip all departure. Alpha Sierra X ray Gulf Sierra is climbing through two thousand nine hundred feet for seven thousand feet. So then we're gonna uh, switch on the autopilot. Gonna switch on the flight control and a nav mode because we're and now let's switch back quickly to uh, little nav map. Uh, let me make sure that you're you can see it. And 
as you can see, the airplane is slowly turning, right? So we, we made a small mistake by not directly making that turn to the uh, correct direction. And this is how you can use it, right? So on the on the left side, you can see the, the active lag. Um, you can also see, hey, we didn't load up or correct aircraft performance file. So make sure that you also load that file, right? We didn't load it uh, currently. Um, so make sure that you load both the fly plan and the uh, aircraft performance file if you want to use it, I would say, optimally. And here so you can see also that other aircrafts are taking off, right? So it, it's really cool. It gives a good idea, okay, what, what where you are and still has the options to, to zoom out and zoom in of course and this is how you can use uh, two machines using uh, say flight using little nav map one remote one which is used for tracking purposes and one is the uh, flight simulator itself which is the main console uh, so here's also where this video ends so I hope you liked it if you liked it then consider to use the like button if you've got questions or comments then use the comment boxes below the video and if you want to see more of the, these videos and want to stay up to date about new videos being posted, then make sure that you're subscribing to my channel. Uh, thanks for watching and see you next time.